Hi everyone, Ray from Pro String again. Yeah, again. <laughs> um, today's uh, racket will be a tennis racket, as if, if you haven't figured that out yet. <clears throat> uh, it'll be a Wilson N Code Pro. N Pro, so N Code N Pro to be exact. That's how it appears uh, on the racket. So Wilson N Code N Pro. All right, guys. It is a very interesting stringing pattern, actually. I believe it is 18 by 18. 18 mains by 18 crosses. Maybe the only racket out there with this stringing pattern. Lots of rackets with 18 mains, but not 18 crosses. If, uh, if you can think of another one that has this stringing pattern, put it in the comment box and let us know. Uh, intrigued to know. As you guys can see, I found my middle. I've added one main string to each side. I'm now going to add eight more, counting on top of the frame. Um, <clears throat> so we've already got one to this side. The reason I'm not counting nine is because I've already got one inside, uh, one main uh, in the middle to each side. So I'm gonna count eight more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. This is just a very basic synthetic gut made by a company called Pros Pro. 130 gauge. Client will uh, client recommended a balance between control and power. It's a 98 square inch. We'll go for 53 pounds of tension, which is our middle on the 98 square inch vacuum. This client requested express service for tomorrow. Uh, wants his rackets uh, ready for tomorrow. Well. His and his girlfriend's, actually. Very old, other racket dropped off is also another very old frame, which is the Hyper Hammer. I told him that if he's playing often, he should upgrade his racket. Now that we're selling, now that we're selling uh, all, all frames through Pro String as well. So if you live in London or in the UK and you want a racket shipped for you, or you want to pick up a racket from us, uh, we, do, we do have limited stock in, in London, so we we'll do next day dispatch to anywhere in the UK. But uh, anyway, three main strings to each side, guys, compensating your tensions to each side of the racket, keeping it symmetrical and the tension uh, nicely spread out whilst you're doing your stringing job. What last thing you want to do is do one side and then do another. Just uh, not a good idea. You might get away with it, but just, just as you'd imagine, though, logically speaking, if you add tension to one side and not the other, you know, you're risking deforming the racket or break, you know, <laughs> if it's a cheaper racket, you may, you may even break it. Uh, I'd like to think that most top frames would survive, but how many times? unclear and it doesn't make a difference to you or, or whoever stringing your racket because you're gonna have to do every string anyway right <clears throat> and as you can see pulling every string individually don't cut corners guys I just had a client drop off a, a racket he's changing he's wanting to change stringers uh, well he now realizes the difference it's a very very big difference from uh, from my stringing or you know someone who does a good job whether it's myself or someone else to someone who's doing you know doing oh who, who'd you give your rackets to to a oh somebody at the club somebody at the club's probably got a manual machine never done a course or at least showed interest in you know having a uh, stringing as good you know, being a good stringer it's easy it's easy to be a good well i say it's easy to be a good stringer it's not it's not rocket science um, you know, but a lot of people don't, they just do it for their friends that don't have a clue or whatever. And, and the ones that do have a clue, like, you know, this gentleman, for example, is, uh, looking for an alternative, whether maybe he's fed up with his stringer or he's away on holiday or, or whatever it is. So he came to my door, to my house, where I have my workshop where I'm talking uh, to you from now or making this video from. Um, and a lot of people do come to my front door and, well, they think it's a shop. 
well, I am a shop. I've become London's shop without the shop. Funny enough. Um, but back to my point, you know, you, 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 will, you will lose a lot of clients if you don't um, up to date a little bit on stringing, at least a little bit. I don't, you know, this client was asking me, was, uh, he's asked me for 53 pounds of tension. It's a Babylon Pure Strike. And um, anyway, guys, sorry. Last, uh, last main string, put that tension up, 15 to 20% as recommended. Um, back to this guy, but he, was, uh, he brought me a racket and I swear the tension was like, you know what, I forgot the racket here. Ah, no, it was rackets that he'd been using. He took it, he's got a new racket. Uh, I mean, it was like a trampoline. I mean, it might have been, I, I've strung tennis, uh, strong badminton and squash rackets tighter than the tension in, in his tennis racket. He said he got it done last summer. Okay, fine. But even still, even still, you know, 55 pounds of tension should not feel like 30. That's, uh, and the knots were terrible. It's just, hi. It's, uh, you know, everybody's free to go wherever they want and get the racket really strong. Of course they are. But to make a good example, I'd rather have a crap racket with, a, with good strings or at least, at least a good tension, even if the strings are crap. I'd like to have good tension on a shit racket, excuse my French, as to uh, a great racket with shit strings. Just doesn't make sense. Cannot control the ball. Just can't control the ball when the, when the strings are just so loose. Just really unpleasant. Anyway, last main string again, guys. Up your tension. I've gone from 55 to 60.9. Sorry, 55, no, 53 to 60.9. <clears throat> my uh, my machine comes with a, a knot button and the knot button is um, programmed to 15% always. I know they're now recommending 20%, but I find that it's really, I may change one day, I may change one day. Um, but I find that, you know, even on my own rackets, I do the same. I always string everyone's rackets as if, as if they were my own. Um, I am quite passionate about stringing in an odd way, I guess you could say. Um, and yeah, that's, uh, that's that. <laughs> so guys, 18 by 18, we've got 18 crosses. I normally cut seven and a half. I've got one cross left, so that's probably about half. I'm gonna go seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm just gonna turn this around. Seven, full length of the racket, guys, full length. Not just the length of the head, but full length. I know you guys saw me measure uh, when I started the mains and I was measuring my main string. Um, you saw me measure them and uh, I did count just the, the head, but that's for my mains. It's a little bit different to my crosses. I guess you could also count your crosses uh, 18 times, right? I count just my one side and then I measure it. With the crosses a bit different, I guess you could count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on and so on and so on. It'll take you a bit longer. Um, be interesting to see how much string you had left over. I think it might it might have too much left over, depending how much uh, uh, lag or there's you know someone who counts like that isn't the same as someone who counts like this, right? So use that hand, guys, especially on your. Well, on all of the strings and all your cross strings, you need to move. You can hear that noise that you're hearing. That's the friction between the mains and the crosses. And if you're not careful, what you do is, if you don't move your hand up and down, you're effectively burning the string. That's friction between your mains and your crosses. And that's what happens when you hit the tennis ball. The strings rub against each other. The, the more spin you play with, the more friction caused. Therefore, the quicker you break strings. But I, I find that the first few are always a little bit harder to pull through. So just be careful with that. Slow it down if you need to. You don't want to damage the string, guys. There's nothing worse than getting a, a racket restrung and it comes back to you and there's a whole bunch of little cuts in the string, little kinks, if, you, if you'd like to call it as well. Um, so yeah, just, just be sensible. Be sensible, don't rush it. I get it sometimes, you know, we're under pressure and, and if you are someone who's got a stringing business, Oh, I need to get this done, or I've got this, I've got that. I mean, I'm the first one to know 
uh, to know about this. Uh, I've just been juggling my three kids who are under the age of eight at the moment for, for eight days by myself and you know, streaming late at night and you name it. Um, but you know, ultimately, it's important to do a good stringing job. Even if, it is, even if it is for yourself. It's for yourself, you just when you want to do your best work, if anything. But like I said, uh, you know, I string everyone's racket like if it was my own. I don't cut corners. I don't do anything out of, the, out of what I would consider the norm. Two rackets, like I mentioned before, once the grip's done as well. Um, service you should have, really invest, you know, 50, 100 dollars, euros, pounds, whatever your currency might be. Yeah, I'm not saying you just squeeze every client, oh, you should change your grip. Um, but I would suggest, you know, when you see, when you do see a, a client's a grip that could do with changing, then just mention it to them. Even if you just make a buck or two. Why not? Why not? There we go, guys. So going back to uh, the racket that I'm stringing now. As you can see, I string one in front, one ahead. What does that mean? I'm always, I always have two strings that I've weaved. Pull one, support the string, don't let it come down. Yeah? Keep the string nicely in place. Shouldn't, shouldn't really have to apply much pressure, generally speaking. push it upwards and then weave again and again and again and again yep string don't cut it not too short but don't leave it there's nothing worse guys than seeing a long knot literally makes my eyes bleed don't do it I wish um ah, my phone broke this morning I had some pictures I took last night between uh, a good stringer and a bad stringer pretty much to uh, to make a long story short so, client brought a racket in, actually from New York, New York City. Um, I got it strong at his local club or something. Be careful with your local club. Might not do a terrible job, but uh, yeah, some people are fussier than others as well. It's just, yeah, some people don't understand the art of stringing or, or anything to do with stringing for that matter, never mind the art. Um, don't leave the knots long, guys. The knot just looks awful. Short knots. Short knots is the way forward. It looks good. It looks professional. Even if you're not professional, try to look it. Um, always a reminder as well, your cross string, that one should be opposite to this one, and this one should be opposite to this one. A good way to check your work is Check your last weave. This one is under in my case, and this one is over, which means this one should be under, which it is, and you've guessed it, this one should then be over, which it is. Great way to, uh, easy way to check your work. The thing is, if you make enough mistakes in one row, you could end up finishing still correctly. So just watch out for that as well. <clears throat> This is a really good way to weave as well. One hand over, 
holding the string at the end. Some stringers will do what I'm about to do now. Obviously not my preferred way of doing it, if not I'd do it. A lot of them will pull the string up and then they'll weave like this. And then you've got to find, you've got to find yourself some more string. There you go. I don't like it personally. That's also just my habit. Since the age of 12, I've been doing what you guys have seen in some of my videos. If you've seen more than one of my videos, there you have it, boom. And through. Little useful piece of information, perhaps. So, just to put it. So if I need to pull this string, um, you always want it to be clear of your fixture. Yeah, I'm not gonna pull it because I need to pull one more through. Uh, so what I wouldn't suggest is that you go through this side of the fixture and pull it like this, and then it's pulling against your, your fixture. Always try to stay clear. If your machine is a good machine, it should have a lock. And when I say lock, so this machine has a little lever down here. That's it, racket's locked. Or at least the, uh, the machine in itself. Yeah? Not going anywhere. So if you are looking for more space or you have this function on your machine, use it so that way it's not touching your, your fixtures. <clears throat> Second last cross, guys. Last cross, up your tension as always on every single finishing knot you'll do. Up the tension. 15 to 20%. If you wanna figure out how to work out your percentage times whatever tension you're using, times that by 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and you'll have your 15 or 20% more. So for 15, sorry, 15% would be 0.15 and then you have your result and just add that to your uh, original sum there you go Parnell knot all day guys great knot to use and it's not difficult to do it all right well guys that's all for now until the next racket Wilson N code N pro uh, this grip, this grip is in awful condition, which will be changing. Straighten up your strings if need be. My straightening up is almost non-existing, to be honest with you. Uh, maybe a little bit on the crosses, if anything. Uh, I'm on the main, sorry. Drop here a little bit. There you go. Nice straight strings. And there you have it, guys. Take care for now. Stay safe and happy stringing. Bye-bye.